Praise the Lord, everybody. Brother Stu here, back to Bible videos. I want to acknowledge the Lord in all our ways that He may direct our path, that in all things He alone get the glory. I just want to do this quick video because it's pressing on me. Um, it's called, the term is called slain in the spirit. I've heard this term a lot. And um, for whatever reason, now I'm starting to look into it more. And um, I've heard this term a lot and also hear when people pray, let self be slain. Now, that will say make sure I make, we acknowledge the Lord in all our ways that he may direct our path and in all things he alone get the glory. I may, I may have said that, but there's no harm in making sure that I acknowledge him. Um, I've heard these terms a lot and first by saying they're saying two different things. Um, when someone says, when I, when I hear someone pray, let self be slain is... I don't know if they know what they mean, but put it in that context, the Word of God said we ought to mortify the deeds of the body. Mortify means make dead. Make dead. Be dead to the things of the flesh. Kill it. Be slain. Let self be slain. Let our will be mortified that we conform and follow the will of God and not our own will. You know, that that's what I take out of when someone says, you know, let self be slain, but slain in the spirit. From what I've so far looked into of this of this term and how people how people are operating. I'm not gonna you know, we have to be careful and that's what I've been I was I was caution caution to be careful with this subject thank god for that because we just want to look at the word of god and i'm looking at it from the that i'm looking at it from the angle of like false prophets like benny hen who takes off his suit jacket and and waving his jacket over the people and everybody is falling down <laughs> We're talking about the Most High God, folks. You know, the Most High God is not some genie in a bottle, in a bottle where he just rub three times and he just appear. You know, God is everywhere. You know, and and let's look at what Jesus said. Glory to God in the highest. In St. John chapter 3 and verse 8, listen at the language of what Jesus says here. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Hallelujah to God. God move however he want to move. Nobody can tell God how and when and where to move. Nobody. He said, we see the children of God know the sound of the spirit. That's why we ought to be able to try the spirit by the spirit, whether it's of God or not. Because the sound of the enemy is different from the sound of God. We hear the sound there, but we don't know whence, whence it cometh or where it goes. That's why our congregation of hundreds or thousands, the, the power of God can move in the midst of the place. Glory to God. And you know, in that midst of that congregation, only one could be filled with the Holy Spirit. We hear the sound, we can see the manifestation of it, but one gets filled because God is the one who gives the gift. You got these so-called charlatans, you know, with all this glam and and entertainment. You got this African pastor, the prophet, so-called prophet, 
call him saying saying he can float and and saying he can conjure up angels and having all this stuff and, and the people rolling around and and all frantic and stuff like that. This 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 is a dangerous game. This is this, this is not a game. This is a dangerous thing. Here the here here the Lord Jesus said, look. It, it it move where it want to move. It come when it want to come and go when it want to go. So it's everyone that is born of the Spirit. I'm not going to spend too much long on this. Because I hear my son's about to act up and I have to go back to the rest without the work tonight. Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. God is in control. God is in control. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Pardon a little edit. I had to pause. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. When we, we have to be careful what we, we have to be careful. If I, if I end on this note, I will end on this note. We have to be careful and pray God help us to understand and to discern. And we have to be careful what we label manifestations in the church. We have to be careful what we label various manifestations in the church. If we're not sure, it's best to say nothing. If we're not sure, it's best to say nothing. There's nothing wrong. If you don't know, just keep quiet. Just sit there and listen. Just wait. The spirit, the, the wind blow it where it lifts. We hear the sound thereof. And here in Acts 2, there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind, and it fit all the house where they were sitting. So I'm going to pray and look more into this because um, we know one thing: the Word of God says that all things be done decently and in order. And I know the Most High God, because in His Word, He is a God of order. He's not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all the churches. So pray for us, saints. Pray for us. and um, We're going to look more into this. I'm going to um, reach out to a fellow brother in the Lord and, and, and communicate. Because that's what the Bible says. He said, in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you all. Peace be unto you.